you are dad on the Jim Crespin Podcast. Thrilled to have my buddy, Jojo Mason, on the podcast today. How are you, brother? Man, it's nice to see you. I haven't seen you in a minute. I know, I know. It's this damn uh, lockdown bullshit and COVID and restrictions on travel. It's really messed with my social life. How about messed you? My social life messes with my brain, <laughs> messes with my, you know. I mean, here's the thing. Like, I, I'm getting too old to party anyway, so it's not like I'm going to the clubs. I'm spending more time with my lady now, and, and she's happy. And, yeah. JC, one thing you told me a long time ago is happy wife happy life <laughs> and boy i got that i now. wish i could say i coined that <laughs> phrase but but i didn't um you've been busy though during the lockdown you've started the mental health mondays initiative you've been doing this amazing job on these covers you've been posting regularly so tell us a little bit about how you've been occupying your time and about these initiatives specifically well let's talk about the mental health monday man like <clears throat> it was so funny because at the beginning of oh what's that come here boy Oh, this is my mayonnaise. He likes mayonnaise. This is mayonnaise. Everybody say hi to the mayonnaise. <laughs> um, all right, get out of here. Guy. Um, <laughs> special man, guest it's, spot. It's, it, it was so funny, man, because at the beginning of when all when everything started to get locked down, we were on we were on tour, right? Like you would put together uh, the 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 GB the Bamford tour, right? And, uh, and so we had gone out on the road and we were on like, what, like week number two or something like that mm -hmm. for show number five. And, 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 and we were just all about to wrap up, up the tour of Saskatchewan. That's right. That's right. We were finished. We finished up in Moose Jaw and, yeah. um, and we came once we got the, that was our last show. Once we got home, I thought, you know what, it's going to be fine. Whatever it was, we going to be all right. It's going to be, let's just occupy our time. And then it was in a week. And then. I kept getting email after email after email of shows being canceled and, and, and my, my, you know, my livelihood, essentially, I had just told the wife, I said, Hey, I want you to quit working, quit your job at the bar. You're miserable. I want you to, I want you to focus on something that you want to do. I got us for the next 12 months financially. We're going to be fine. I got all these shows coming up. I'm, you know, we're, we're going to be fine. And she, so she did. And so I felt, Hey, no problem. We're going to be out. We're going we to be all right. And then all of a sudden, this email started rolling in, show cancel, show cancel, show cancel, show cancel, show cancel. I'm sitting there like, uh, uh-oh. And I went into almost panic mode, right? Um, how am I supposed you to You and everybody survive? else. Right? Yeah. How are we supposed to survive? How are we supposed to, right. to, to get into, how am I supposed to pay my bills? How am I supposed to provide for my, 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 my woman and my family that I said that I was going to? And so, I, man, I started, I started spiraling a little bit. And I, 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 my mental game was just... I found myself in tears most days. I found well, and you myself... were also at a very critical point in your career, right? You've had a lot of success with the first record, yeah. a bunch of top 10 singles. You were starting a new project. You're five years into the game, really at a high level. And then all of a sudden the rug gets pulled out from under you. And that's, that was the, that was the hardest part too, is like, we, we had a plan going into 2020, right. And that we were going to capitalize, we were playing bigger shows that we'd ever played. And we were, you know, the buzz was, the buzz was there and, and, and to have it all just kind of ripped from, from under me. I mean, I, again, this is just me talking me and thinking, looking at myself in the mirror talking, uh, you know, this is insane. This is crazy. And so I went through this mental period where this period of time where, I was, I was down and out and I was struggling and I was in tears most days. And I was, I was, I, it was awful, man. It was awful for my mental game. And I pride myself on being able to take situations, um, dissect them and then implement how I need to uh, implement the tools, uh, that I have, uh, and that I've worked on getting and, and building, um, to deal with to deal with all the BS shit that, that's you know that comes my way, um, and that's one thing I'm I'm very proud of. I've been at my rock bottom, JC. I've been at my rock bottom where I was drinking a bottle a day. I was smoking a a, a quarter a quarter of weed a day. I was I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, bro. It was bad. I've been at my rock bottom. You know what I mean? And and I started to. So feel that inspired like, you to want to launch Mental Health Mondays, not only to get yourself on track, but I know you, and I know what a charismatic charismatic soul you are, <laughs> and I know how you really get off on the idea of influencing other people around you, which well, is why you're what, such a great entertainer. 
Well, that's what it was, man. It was me in in a <clears throat> in a, a place where I I was so down and I was struggling, and I I sat to myself. I I sat to myself. I fought myself. I said, "Listen, I you're better than this to let this cripple you. We will find a way to figure it out." There's no questions asked, but if you're feeling like this, there's a very good chance somebody else might be feeling this too, right? Um, I've always preached. I've yeah, always pre that's I've very astute of you. So you launched it. I did. I you launched it. it, but not unlike my podcast, you launched it by featuring special guests, not just talking about your own experience, but making sure you're tapping into other people's pain and, and their coping mechanisms. Yeah in order to uh, give people a broad array of ideas to choose from. But that's, that's, that's kind of how you, that's kind of how you have to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I needed to reach out to people that I looked up to. So I asked, I asked Dallas and I asked, uh, uh, you know, I asked Jess Moskaluk and I asked some, some other artists that were in the same kind of boat that I was in. Um, I, I was, I, I rent, I really looked to them for some like, help <laughs> you know like we go i'm 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 struggling guys how are you doing um but here's a cool thing too jc is is the november in 2019 i had started working with this trainer her name was natasha she's incredible she's out of edmonton one of the most badass chicks i've ever met um and she she was every week she would say okay sunday i'm gonna call you if I have to call you every Sunday to make sure you're, you're, you're staying on track, then I'm going to do it. Call me every Sunday and we would set goals, a nutritional goal. We would set a personal goal and we'd set a fitness goal. That way I would have somebody to hold me accountable. She made me write them down. I still got all the sheets. She made, them write, made me write them down on these sheets. Um, and every week I would see how I did on the last week. And then we would reflect on it, talk about it and then make new goals for the, for the following week. So that's one of the things I implemented in mental health Mondays. Cause it started working for me. Right. It was one of those things that made me feel like I had something to work towards. And, 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 you know, I, I felt, I felt great about being able to hold myself accountable to somebody else. So I thought, why not? It's try imperative, to it? right? It, it's so necessary, man. If you don't have goals and you're not striving for something, then, then what's the point? What are you doing? You know what I mean? And right. And <clears> as hard as that is to, 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 to sometimes grasp and to understand that that's what people need to do in order to stay motivated and to stay, to stay disciplined. Um, it, it, it really helped me. And so that's one of the things that I started, I wanted to implement for this mental health Mondays and, and people responded, people responded crazy. So almost every Monday for the first, for the first few months of oh God, it was probably about five or five months we did it. And, uh, and I loved every Monday, man, the, it started growing and growing and growing. And, you know, we get about, we got about 50 to, you know, a hundred people that come on every, every Monday and, and, and just listen. And I get, man, one of the most rewarding things. I know you know this because you're, you're one of the good guys like I am, man. And, and to hear that what you're doing is, is impacting and is making a difference and is, is impacting somebody's life means more than almost anything else. Right. It means more to hear that what you're doing matters. And that also helps my mental game. That makes my motivation that much more. And again, <clears throat> holds me accountable. I got a message yesterday um, after my Mental Health Monday with uh, with my girl, Sarah Burke. Um, somebody said, thank you so much for doing these. I, I didn't know anything about these. I'm so glad that you started to do these. Um, and I've watched a bunch of them back. And my God, I love what you do. And to, just to hear that, man, is is... It was special for me, right? It, it, you it know, really was. You know, what you've done is you've developed almost unconsciously, you've developed a curriculum of things to keep you on track mentally by walking through some of these steps, whether it's goals and self-accountability. Have you ever heard of the the seven psychological needs? Uh, it, it came to me through the Tony Robbins program, uh -huh. but it's been developed by various psychotherapists over the years. It's really interesting because if you take this model and apply it to your profession, to um, your relationship, uh, whatever it is, you can start to delineate where the problems are. So the, the seven, and I'll just recant them here yep. quickly because you've touched on a bunch of them. Uh, number one, significance. You need to feel like you matter, which you just said, right? If you don't feel like you matter in your relationship, in your profession, in your life, it's going to send you down a, a pernicious path. Number two, you need some degree of certainty in your life, which you spoke to earlier. You've got this tour lined up. You've asked your 
your fiance to quit her job. And in the meantime, your livelihood has been pulled away from you. That certainty, even, even those wild motherfuckers who like live life by the seat of their pants, they need some degree of certainty or their life is going to collapse. Right. Third thing is variety because as much as we need certainty, we need a little bit of challenges in order to make life interesting, right? Like we do require those things. So we need some variety. The fourth is love and connection, which is something you're getting by doing these mental health Mondays. You're connecting with people, whether it's the guests that you actually have on air with you or the people who are giving you feedback afterwards. Fifth is growth. So if you've ever encountered, you know, a CEO who has the dream job, who just walks away from the top of their company without any scandal, uh, and they just leave the bit, the business, whatever it is they're doing, you're like, man, that guy was crushing her. That lady was crushing it. It's because some part of them was no longer growing. And just like in nature, if you're not growing, you're dying, right? It's a natural law. Um, and the sixth and final uh, 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 psychological need, it's actually six needs, I think I said seven, but six, is contribution to the greater good. And that is something that you see, well, we all need it on some level. We need to feel like we're making a difference. It also contributes to our uh, significance module. Yeah. Um, but when you see someone like Richard Branson, who's literally done everything, yeah. and now all he's doing is giving millions and billions away to charities, it's because there's a part of him that still has a need to feel like he's got to contribute to his tribe. Totally. Right? Totally. So interestingly enough, you have been able to uh, display and uh, fortify the psychological needs in people uh, yeah. through this program without even really, you know, being aware of it essentially till now. So yeah. it's so cool to see when you just take action and you're willing to be vulnerable. And there must have been some trepidation for you to consider having this discussion publicly like when you started mental health mondays i would imagine there was a part of you that was like jesus i'm sure everybody's having a hard time i don't know if i should share my hard times like there must have been a little bit of that there was a lot of it there was a lot of it but one thing that i, I again like I've, I've been through my counseling sessions when i like i told you i've been at my rock bottom one of the things that i will never ever do again is is hide from hide from being vulnerable i'm not i'm not scared about I'm not that doesn't scare me anymore but it does for a lot of people and it, it it's I've I've had to <laughs> I've had to work right I've had to work at I had to put that time in in my in my own mental capacity to to really really get to that point where I I when I say I'm an open book you can take that to the bank I don't I I I will bear my heart and soul to you and you can take it or you can leave it and I'm okay with that I don't need I don't need somebody to to love me. I don't need somebody to hate me. I just I if if you do love me and you do accept what I'm saying, hey, all the better. But when I was starting it out, you know, it was uncharted territories for me and I had no idea how the reaction was going to be or if it was going to get rejected. And again, like a, a lot of people get scared of rejection and that's one of the things that I'm I was scared of. And and so when I started it, I put a thing out there and and my team was really supportive. Uh Charlotte and Shelby, they were like hell yeah you should do something like that that's amazing i talked i called dal i said this is what i want to do man he said okay jump on it man i'll be your first guest i said ooh, ooh, jenna jenna as well and, and kelly see all of them they were just fired up about it D and, dallas and has been helped. quite public with um with the struggles he's had with mental health and i i do think I'm grateful that that you've taken the lead on it and that people like him have stepped out and talked about it at times mm -hmm. because I think it's a very difficult space for celebrities to navigate, right? The the average person assumes you're loaded because they hear you on the radio, they see you on stage, they assume your life is everything that theirs isn't and therefore it's, it's very hard for celebrities sometimes to be vulnerable and go, Hey, listen, like I actually struggle too. And here are the places I struggle because there's such a desire sometimes uh, for, for the trolls or for the detractors to be like, well, you know, you're, you're on the radio or you're rich. Like, what, what are you crying about? You know? And, and I think that, that with some high profile suicides in show business over the past decade, especially, but prior to that as well, we've really seen this, this, 
coming to Jesus conversation that we all needed to have with, hey, just because you have checked these boxes in life and you might be on the radio and you might have a single that's popping, it doesn't mean everything else in your world is working and functioning at a high level for you. And I think that's what people don't realize, so which was which was one of the comments that I, I, I got was, thank you for being so, and, and quote unquote, real, who, you know, whose definition is right when it comes to real. But um, I think I interpreted it as thank you for being, for allowing yourself to be vulnerable because what a lot of people don't feel like they can relate to celebrities. And I'm not saying I'm a, a celebrity by any means, but um, I, I, I can't, I can't look at, you know, uh, the house that Ryan Reynolds has and be like, you listen, man, we're going through the same thing, right? Like it, it's not that I, I don't, I can't relate to that. Right. He's rolling in mansions. He's rolling in, in Ferraris probably. Right. But, but not unlike you, I'm sure he's got his tough days. I'm sure oh, he's that, got his tough moments. Right. And that's it. But that's not what people realize. Right. That's not what right. people see. All they're seeing is the, the fancy cars and the, you know, the, the gin that he's putting out and the, this and the, that, and, and on a much smaller scale, that's, that may be what people see to me. So for me to sit down and say, for me to sit down and say, guys, like <laughs> I am not okay. I am, I'm, I'm, and for me to bear my soul, I think people appreciate it. I, I, at least I hope they do. And if, if they don't, uh, that's also fine with me. Right. But it's nice to be able to, to put myself out there and have it respond or have people respond so positively and, mm -hmm. and have it affect them in a way where it may spark that thing in them to, you know, go work out today or, you know, or write down a goal or what I like to do on my mental health Mondays, which, you know, we're going to get you on one of these Mondays, JC. Um, I'm in. One of the things I love is, is setting goals. And so people come in, I set my goals this week. I crushed my goals. And, and, and for me that I, I get so much joy and fulfillment. Um, from 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 that alone right it, it really makes me uh in my mind feel like i'm i'm still on the right track i'm doing the right thing and i've had some dark days man in this last year and i'm sure a lot of people ha as a lot of people have and um to the to the point where i'm sitting questioning questioning my existence on this earth what am i even here for like you know i can't i can't even provide for my family anymore i can't you know, uh, I'm, I'm watching my bank account, the, the number in my bank account go down. And I'm sitting there like I went from playing shows, you know, from on tour. I'm going to have to go deliver some pizzas. And, and my goal, my goal was, um, you know, my goal was to be able to work in this business and be able to pay my bills. I, and, be, and I don't need fancy it's cars. Pretty reasonable goal. Right. I don't need fancy right. cars. I don't need, you know, big fancy jewelry. I don't need the watch. I don't need the nice shoes. They're nice to have once in a while, but I don't need that. I'm a very simple guy. Give me a H and M t-shirt and some old Navy jogger pants and, and a pair of chucks. And I'm a happy guy. Right. That's, that's, that's me. So I think you make a really good point in terms of, of goal setting and achievement, how that makes you feel like you're on a trajectory and you're moving forward in your life and how imperative that is for mental health. What happens in that second week when you don't hit your goals and what happens when you get off track and what advice do you have for people based on your experiential knowledge on how to get yourself back together and pull yourself back together? Cut yourself some slack. No hesitation on that one. Cut yourself some slack. Man, what people don't do is that exact thing. They don't give themselves a break. They don't cut, let, let themselves. If Man, if I need to have, I'll give you an example, JC. I feel like, I feel like I have crushed this, you know, pandemic. I feel like I've throughout this, I went on a, I went on a radio tour across the country in an RV. You know what I mean? Social distance, of course. I remember. Yeah. Right? I went on a radio tour across the country. I, I put out a new song that tried a new song that I'd never, I had never thought I'd be putting out in chemical. Um, I, I, I played some shows in Calgary, social distance, of course. Um, but I, <laughs> I, I feel like I, I did my mental health Mondays, you know, um, I was still to start the cover music. series, which the I want to talk about because you've been yeah. doing an amazing job on taking these these pop covers and and yeah. and putting your own interpretation on them to make them yours 
And so I feel like I'm doing all of these things that are that are right and I'm 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 fired up, I'm excited. Jim, last week, man, I last week was one of my low points. I you know, uh, we all do the roller coaster thing and and last week it wasn't that I I needed to talk to somebody. It wasn't that I wanted to talk to somebody. It wasn't that, you know, I I I felt like I could talk to somebody. It was none of those things. All of the things that all of the tools that I have built and 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 put in my toolkit uh to to dig myself out of my rock bottom, they were nowhere to be found. And I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't I couldn't understand it. And so when I'm st- when I'm I, I, it was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. I got home. Um we had recorded a couple more of those covers with my friend Mike and 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 I got home and I'm sitting there and this overwhelming feeling came over my entire body and and I felt I felt stuck. I felt hurt i felt sad and all of these ne- man I, and i and I, in the meantime i'm also looking at the scale saying i dropped 25 pounds meantime i'm looking at all these covers and the numbers and the views and the comments all these positive <laughs> things but i'm looking at them and i'm still i'm still saying like i'm, I'm almost shaking at this point it's tuesday night i'm looking i'm almost shaking and i'm uh, i'm i'm I, 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 I run myself a bath, right? I'm trying everything I can to just, okay, let's, let's get in your, I run myself a bath and I hysterically cried in the bathroom, right? For the first time in almost a year. And it was at the point where I felt like I was about to crack. I was, I'm something in me is starting to crack yet. All of these incredible things are happening. I'm, I'm still putting out these covers. I'm still getting this response. I couldn't talk to people, man. I couldn't talk to anybody. And I feel like I've done a really good, I, I, a really good job up until this point, and I beat myself up for it. I beat myself up for it. When I went to counseling, Jim, long time ago, uh, my counselor said to me, and this is the one thing I don't remember much of what we talked about, but this one thing really, really stuck with me. And she said, "Jojo, if you're going to beat yourself up, which I can't stop you from doing, but if you're going to beat yourself up, get a smaller stick." Right. If you're going to beat yourself, get a smaller stick. And so, yeah, there's there's a lot of wisdom in that. Um, I think I think your inner voice, which we all have, we all have some sort of inner monologue. Uh, You want to start reframing that as more of a coach than a critic and tyrant. Right. And and so the the advice I I give people and I, I take it myself is, you know, if I shift my domain of evaluation on how I'm actually doing to the places where I am doing well in life. So maybe, you know, I mean, I, I haven't been able to give my clients any degree of certainty this year, but I have been able to give my daughters a lot of certainty this year on maintaining commitments, making sure I'm there for them. So if I, if I can forgive myself for the things that are outside of my control as an agent, manager, promoter, and lean into the things where I've really grown and developed and, and been able to been afforded this time, which has given me the ability to be a better version of myself in that realm. Yeah. Then I can start to feel the energy of encouragement rising within me. Right. And, and it's nice so, when that rubs off on, on you because you're getting that energy back from your girls too. Right. Right. They're excited. Totally. They're motivated now. And they're seeing, oh, snap, we get to spend more time with daddy. And that's that must be fuel for the, you, fuel for your body, fuel for your mind, fuel for your heart, too. Now, let me ask you, Jay, what advice would you give to people that don't have that? Right. Oh, my God. Hang on one sec. Um, yeah, sorry. It's all good. Yeah, you know it's I mean? all good. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to somebody um, that doesn't have a, you know, a couple of beautiful daughters or that has them to help build them up. Um, well, that's a specific example. But what I would say totally. is that everybody has some component of their life somewhere that they're pretty proud of. There's usually one thing that you can kind of hang your hat on and go, you know, even when you were talking about what you were dealing with last Tuesday, the fact that you mentioned you lost 25 pounds, that's got to feel good. Does. Like that's got to make you feel like, okay, I'm making some traction in this area. Yeah. And then you got to ask yourself, why am I making traction or like, how am I getting ahead in that area? Why am I making progress, not traction, but progress in that area? 
And what am I not doing in the places where I'm feeling like I'm not making any progress? What's within my control? Really focusing on the things that are within your control. Yeah. Like I went through a very difficult uh, uh, battle with depression in my mid twenties. Uh, you know how important fitness is to me. I stopped training. Uh, I just felt like a lump of shit. I just, I had no energy. I had no motivation. And, and the other thing that I would propagate as advice is start small. You're not going to be able to boast about it on Instagram, but for, for the week that I wasn't able to get my ass motivated to train, I would force myself to at least get out of bed at 7 a.m., put my shoes on, tie up the laces, walk to the front door, walk back to bed, untake, undo the laces, go back to bed. Like If that's what I needed to do in order to chalk up a little something in the wind column for me, yeah. then that's what I was willing to do. And that comes back to your point of, of not beating yourself up with such a big stick. It's like, okay, you know what? Sometimes you got to recalibrate the expectations. You do. You Sometimes you got to bring that bar down a little bit, yeah. right? Start winning at this level totally. and then make your way up. I know you're a fight fan. You don't take a young, great fighter who won a gold in the Olympics and throw him in with a heavyweight champion of the world. It's not a good move. No. You let him develop his skill set against competition that, that helps him develop his competence, but also helps him develop his confidence, totally. right? So totally. he gets 12, 13 wins under his belt. Then you yeah. throw him in with a top 20 guy and then you build it up there. And then eventually you're fighting for the championship. If we all do that in our own lives, we go, okay, like today is not the day for me to fight for the fucking championship. Yeah. But maybe today's a day for me to go and, and take a walk around the block. And yeah. maybe for, for today, that's a win. And brother, that's one of the things I preach on my Mental Health Mondays is the, 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 the importance of goal setting. Yo, JC, let me just shut this door real quick. Hang on one sec. Yep. My fiance just got home from a job interview. Oh my God, I'm excited to hear about it. Um, I hope it went well for her. Yeah, dude, she's amazing, man. And you know it's going to go. You know, I know it's going to go well. They would be lucky to have her at this salon, I tell you. Um, but anyways, let's get back to so. So well, that's one of the things that I preach on my Mental Health Mondays, man, is, is the importance of goal setting, right? No matter how big, no matter how small, I, the, the, the goal that I always say to people and I always every week, that's the one thing I preach is nutritional goal, physical goal, uh, personal goal. Personal goal can be anything from, you know, uh, starting your day out with make sure you eat breakfast, make sure you just get a meal in you first thing just to get some energy or make your bed every day for one week. Yeah. Make your bed every day one week. You want to know why? Because when you walk your ass back into that room, you look at that bed. Ooh, I did that. I yeah. did that. Admiral McRaven went uh, viral, and so is Jordan Peterson talking about the, the validity of cleaning your room, right? Just just clean your room. Like, you, you can't get, like I said before, you can't get on Instagram and brag about it because nobody's going to give a shit. But for <laughs> yeah. you, it's going to feel monumental. Right. It's going to feel like you took some action and you did something. And and so I think that in this social media laden world where we are so focused on the flex, we're so focused on the flex. It's like we got to remember that the things that 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 bring us back to our humanity are the little things that we accomplish every day that eventually over time add up to uh monumental achievements in some cases, right? Like if you clean your room every day and make your bed every day, nobody's going to give you a medal for that, but you are going to be better off mentally, most likely than somebody who isn't willing to do that first thing in, in the morning and take some action. And also what it does too, Jay, is, is it, is it develops a sense of discipline, yes. right? It develops a sense of discipline and that is discipline is more, is more important, in my opinion, than motivation, right? Motivation is flighting. It comes and it goes, and it comes and it goes, and it comes and it goes. But discipline lasts forever, right? You discipline, discipline is your non-negotiable. Discipline. Exactly. Exactly. And, and the exactly. other, the distinction, and actually I want to hear your take on this. Yeah. What's the difference for people who have a, um, 
a negative connotation as it perter- pertains to discipline because they think of it like corporal punishment. You know, they think of it like getting a spanking, uh, which might be positive for some people. But uh, <laughs> for people who think of, of discipline in a negative connotation, what is the difference between discipline for those people and beating yourself up? What's the difference between those two things? The difference between it, uh, the discipline and beating yourself up. It's not there. There is a, There is a huge difference, in my opinion. There's a huge difference, and the difference is when you beat yourself up, nothing good comes from it. When you when you punish yourself, when you punish yourself, you're not doing yourself a, any justice. You're doing yourself a disservice, and you're you're actually hindering the time you could be spending developing your discipline. You're hindering that that step where you could be you could be hey if i'm gonna if i don't if i'm gonna set a goal i'm gonna clean my room i'll make my bed seven days this week monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday if i don't do it on sunday and and saturday or if i don't monday and monday and tuesday if i don't do it on monday and tuesday but the rest of the week i do it hey you know what celebrate that yeah you set your goal for seven but you crushed five Next week, we're gonna set, we're gonna set it, we're gonna get seven. We're gonna, and if we don't get seven, we're gonna get six. Right. That's the di- that's the difference, man. Discipline is 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 the is whether you like to do something or not, it is it is it is a non like you say, it's a non-negotiable. It's incumbent right? upon you to do it. I think too, as well, and I agree with everything you just said, but I think intent behind it matters. When you're beating yourself up, it's coming from a place of malice right? It's coming from a place of negative emotion, anger, frustration. When you're disciplining yourself, to me, that's, that's a place of love. It's a place of encouragement. You know, I, when I discipline my kids, it's like, it's not from a place of I'm mad. And now I finally lost my temper. It's from a place of, Hey, I want you to do better at this thing. And if you do better at this thing, you're going to feel better. And I'm going to be even more proud of you than I already am. Right. And if we can internalize that conversation a little bit, then it becomes easier for most of us, I think, to delineate the difference. Like, okay, am I beating myself up by being unfair to myself? Yeah. Or am I, am I encouraging the best version of me to float to the surface? I mean, here's the thing too, Jay, is we sit here and we talk about this because you have had lots of practice at it and I've had lots of practice at it. But a lot of the things that I, a lot of the people that I find that that come onto my mental health Mondays, they don't have that gear, or they do have that gear, but they've never had to flip the switch and turn that gear on, where they can sit down, <clears throat> regroup, and say, "Okay, huh, this is this is what's wrong. This is how it's going. Um, I'm I, and I need to do better on this. I'm happy with this. I'm okay with this. Nobody sits down and, and, and well, I can't say nobody, but people don't sit down naturally and just do that. That is part of a discipline thing. And I feel like you really have to, to feel that hurt and to feel that pain in order to develop those things. Right. And I, like I told you, man, I've been at my rock bottom and, and, and I wouldn't be. But you to- also need to take another move. You need to take some ash- action to want to initiate totally. change. Right. Totally. Like that is part of it too, where if you hit rock bottom, it's like, that's okay. Yeah. But what are you going to do to, to move on from there? Right. How are you going to make yourself back? Right. Or how are you going to make your way back to where you really want to be? And I think another thing that, that I once heard, I cannot remember who said it, uh, but I found it very poignant was there is no nobility in uselessly suffering. Right. No nobility in uselessly suffering. So, so a lot of times we talk about you got to suffer for your art. You got to suffer and sacrifice to get the things you want in life. And we start to align this idea of suffering with nobility. It's like it takes courage to suffer, which is true. It does. It takes courage to to make sacrifices and we'll talk about all your physiological changes in a minute. But this idea that if you're uselessly suffering, it's somehow something you should feel proud of. It's like no no no, let that go. It's fine to suffer if you're training for something and, you know, your buckets of sweat are dripping out of you and your muscles are screaming and, and yet you're moving forward and you're growing and you're getting better. It's fine to suffer for your art where you, you sit down with a song and you write it and you go, that fucking hook just isn't quite right. Like it's not quite there. That's fine. But suffering for the sake of suffering, just because someone once told you it was noble, it's no good for your, it's no good for your mind. It's no good for your emotions. And it just, 
leads you down, you know, and, and you see this a lot of times with people in the music industry who want to focus on being busy rather than productive. A lot of industry people who, um, I don't know, they just, they sometimes just seem to be in this perpetual state of being pissed off. You know, it's like, it's like they're, they're, they're suffering all the time. And, and sometimes I'll literally just grab those people, even if they're hard asses by the shoulder and go, Hey, there's no nobility in this. Like, I don't know why you're pissed off right now. You're living a dream. You're making a good living. You're doing what I believe you followed your heart into this business because nobody follows yeah. their head into the music business. So why are you needlessly suffering? Right. So what, what's anyway, the response? What's the, have you ever gotten a, a good response? I've always gotten a thoughtful response. Yeah, I've always gotten nice. a thoughtful response because usually when I do it, I do it from an, I don't do it from a place of, Hey, fuck you, man. What's wrong with you? It's like, totally. it's grab the shoulder. It's like, Hey, are you okay? Like, yeah. why are you putting yourself through this? Why are, yeah. why do you, why do you carry this chip on your shoulder? Like there's no need for it. And you don't have to have it around me and you're not impressing anybody here yeah. with that energy. And you know, generally people will come around. Yeah. So it, they're, they're usually looking for an opportunity to do that. Yeah, man. And that's, that's a big, that's a huge thing is for a lot of people just don't have that. Per Sometimes that's what people need. It's just like, and one of the reasons why I decided to do that, these mental health Mondays is because sometimes people just need a kick in the ass yeah. coming from a place of positivity and, and love, man. How, how amazing is it when you walk down the street, you like somebody's shoes or somebody likes your shoes and they say to you, oh man, nice shoes. You walk away feeling incredible. And then all of a sudden that might spark something in you to be, to make all the positive changes or to make all the, it's those things that come from a place of positive, like you just said, come from a place of positivity and from a place of love that is, can affect everybody else around you so drastically. But a lot of right. people don't know that that's what they need, right? Yeah. So the fact, that and some people seen, require that that yeah. external validation. A lot of artists do, by the way. They're they're conditioned to it, right? And and listen, that's that's part of the game you play. But to learn to generate it uh, internally when you're not receiving the external validation, that's a whole other art form. And and so you've talked very publicly as well, and you and I have had many private conversations about how getting your physiology on track really has helped your mind. You talked about it earlier in terms of goal setting, but tell me a little bit about the actual endorphin type effect that it has on your body when you stop procrastinating and get yourself to the gym to know to do what you know you need to do. Yeah, I'll give you the perfect example. So this last week, like I said, I've been, I set these goals for myself 90 days, right? We're going to do 90 days working out. We're going to feel better. We're going to set, uh, we're going to set a schedule every day this week, uh, the night before. So, you know, exactly. So I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm motivated. I'm feeling good. I'm disciplined. Chanel looked at me last night, my fiance, she looked at me last night and she says, why are you being so lovey dovey today? I was like, what do you mean? Lovey dovey. I love you. I love you every day. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're weirdly being more affectionate and I'm not sure how to take it. But she loved it, of course. She's, you know, she she loved it. And and I thought about it and she's like, you know what? She said to me, she said, you know what to You know what this it comes out in you more and you 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 have this energy about you and this. I just like I don't know what it is because you're not talking to me different. You're not really, you're not really treating me different, but you <clears throat> but I can feel it from you. She said, it always happens when you start taking care of yourself. You start setting your goals again. You start, you start uh, focusing on your music again. You start doing things that make you happy. And, and, and she's like, I think you need to just try your best to, to stay there. I think she's saying that because she likes it. Um, she likes all the pretty, I brought her flowers and I cook for her and stuff like that. And, and, uh, and, and and that's the that that's how it affects me, because it, it affects me in a way where I don't really realize it, right? I'm I'm still going through my motions. I'm still going through my my uh you know my my daily regimen. I wake up, I go for a run, I come home, I eat my pro I eat my protein shake, and, and I do my thing. But she she's with me all the time, and she notices immediately how much happier I am, 
how much brighter my smile gets. She said it to me yesterday. She's that was really nice. I like to hear that. Um, <laughs> but it's it's those things, and I, and I wasn't really aware that that was the thing, right? I wasn't I wasn't aware of it. I just thought, well, your cup runneth over, right? You've taken care of yourself. You've shown yourself that you matter yeah. enough to do something yes. that that maybe wasn't easy, and now yes. you are exemplifying love in a different manner than maybe obviously when you're depressed and you're giving off a different energy and she notices that. And it's good that she's in tune with that. And not only that, but she encourages that in you. Totally, man. It's nice to have that, right? It's nice to be able to, to have somebody to be able to put it into perspective. So I'm now aware like, Oh snap. Okay. And I've been practicing my piano again, man. And I, I've been, I've been, Doing, I go into the shower and I'm doing my vocal warm ups and I'm doing my my things again and I'm doing all the things that I know are productive. That for me, it is so easy to just get lost in this negative space sometimes. And 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 it was incredible. It was incredible to 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 hear from her, somebody that is close to me. Um, what a difference! Only a few days and a few small changes make. Right, the endorphin. Jim, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, man. I, I I read this thing. I don't know if it's a, if it's real, but it sounded real to me. Somebody said in his video, and he was probably a science guy, smarter smarter than me, smarter than me. Um, he says, when you wake up first thing in the morning, that is when you are your mo at your most vulnerable state. That is how you're gonna start your day. That's how you, however your morning goes, is how your day is gonna progress. If you start your day with a sweat, what it does is it releases all of the all of the the hormones or or, or uh, think pheromones or whatever in you that that cause fear, that cause anxiety, and that cause stress. You're releasing these things out of your body, and all it's doing is is bringing your endorphins, all the good things, to the forefront. And if that's how you start every day. My God, there's no telling what you can accomplish, right? So I re that's that's the one thing that clicked in my mind. Um, so that's why I go running every morning now. I mean, it's only been yeah. four days. Master but... your morning to master your life. That's it, man. That's yeah. it. And so, it, I mean, everybody's got their own thing that, that clicks for them. But that was one that really, really clicked for me. And so if I can continue to do that, man, I feel like I'm accomplishing goals every day. I don't, I don't want to just lay in bed till 10 o'clock. I don't, I don't want to do that anymore because I know – that's going to be the rest of my day. And I don't want to spend, you know, 20 hours of my, of, of I don't want to spend 20 hours just being miserable. Right. I don't want that. Yeah. There's three critical aspects to being able to change your state as it pertains to mental, mental health. One is physiology. If you move around, you're right. You're going to get endorphins flowing. You're just going to feel better. Plus your body language changes. And when your body language changes, I mean, it's been proven scientifically, um, your your mind starts to shift and focus on other things, which is the second thing. So physiology, focus. What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on the fight you had with your girlfriend? Are you focusing on uh, the, the dickhead who cut you off in traffic and gave you the finger? Like, what are you focusing on in your mind, right? Because that is going to dictate your emotional state. Exactly. And then the third thing, which we haven't talked about yet, uh, is language, so what language do you use as you describe your life, yourself, your uh, relationships, your profession, right? Is if you, if you took a tape recorder, you just recorded yourself talking about your relationship and you played it back, would you be impressed with the things you were saying? Now, in your case, by virtue of everything you said in this conversation, it would be a good recording. Yeah. But it's interesting to take that observational perspective for yourself and go, well, how, you know, maybe I'm struggling with a relationship with uh, a family member. How do I speak to them? How do I refer to them when they're not around? How do I, you know, maybe it's a business partner. Like, how do I talk about this person when they're not in the room? How do I talk to them when they're in the room? Like, if I'm paying attention to my language, it's important in, in how it affects my state, right? And if the language is encouraging and, and empowering, even though I kind of hate that word because it gets overused, but it does shift your state. So physiology, focus, and language, those things are just all imperative. That's crazy, man. You've done a lot of, a lot of research on this stuff, haven't you? I wasn't happy with who I was. 
Yeah, man. What was you the know? thing that sparked you? What was the thing? To, or was it just like a, a rock bottom thing? Or did you just find that you were at your lowest point? Or what was it that made you really like, all right, enough is enough, man? I, I think that it, it really was instigated by a, a, a suicidal thoughts I had in my mid 20s. Um, when I just thought I was a fucking failure and, you know, it's like, and, and you start to go down this very pathological pernicious road of, of this idea that everyone that you love would be better off without you. Yeah. Right. And as soon as you start embracing that, it's very hard to tread your way back to shore. So, um, I would say that that's where it started. And then, you know, becoming a, a husband and a father, uh, you know, I, I, always struggled with impulsivity, whether that was instant emotional reaction or whether it was getting distracted easily. And so I really started to dial into that and go like, it's just not, it's, it's not indicative of who I actually feel like I am at my core. And I feel like the more I sort of work towards that journey uh, by educating myself, because, you know, the other thing you start to realize, and this is another reason why it's so great. You, you've, initiated mental health Mondays is you're not alone. Yeah. The minute you realize every thought that exists in the universe is essentially like a radio wave yeah. and, and different, they're different transmitters have picked them up over the years. Yeah. Like none of the thoughts you've had are original thoughts. No. They've all been in someone else's mind at some point or simultaneously right now. Right. So if you've thought that, it's time to give up on your life. It's time to surrender. It's time to, to throw in the towel. You're not the first, yeah. you know? And as soon as you start to understand that, and as soon as you start to access uh, the individuals who like yourself have been vulnerable and honest enough to talk about it, the more you can start to build a camaraderie, not, not identifying purely with the, the victim mindset, yeah. but more so of how do I get myself out of here? Like, totally. what are the tactics and strategies to move things forward? And um, and that's why, you know, I mean, I I love you as an artist, but I'm I'm so grateful that for like 40 minutes we can just talk about stuff like this because I think I think there are a lot of people in our industry who struggle with it in and I, and so I've become a big advocate too of being like, hey, listen, like on the outside looking in, my life is great. I got a nice house. I got a beautiful family. Uh, my fitness game is on point, but like I still struggle all the time and I still have to pull in these, these triggers that I've learned now to help me get back on track. It's yeah. not like I'm immune to depression at this totally. point in my life. Totally. You know, and and one thing a lot of people don't realize is that, and, and a lot of the, the things that I hear is people saying, well, you know, there's, there's, there's starving people all over the world. I don't have really have it that bad. It's like, yeah, that's fine. There, there, there are starving people in the world, but it doesn't take away from how you're feeling. It does. It, it's all relative. It doesn't take away from your pain. It doesn't take away. Your pain is no less important than somebody else's pain. And I think when, when I, again, when I was going through my shit, man, I, I had this, this thing in my brain uh, and I found a lot of people have that, that reach out to me and that talk to me. That's one of the things that they have is, is this mental thought, this, this me mentality of, well, if I can't get out of this place by myself, if I can't get out of this place, I don't need to go to therapy. I don't need to go to therapy. I don't need to go talk to nobody. But if I can't get out of this place, then I don't deserve to be happy. I don't. And that was my mentality for <clears throat> way too long. Dude, I was almost 300 pounds. I was eating McDonald's every single day. Like I told you, I was drinking a bottle a day, smoking a quarter of weed a day. I was two packs of cigarettes. I spent all my money. And I, I swatted away every hand that was trying to help me every single one. And, and, and cause I thought I don't need to, if I, if I, if I ask for help, I'm admitting defeat as a man. And, and once, once I got to a place, man, I always tell the story. Like my mom came, I'll never forget the day she came. My brother ratted me out in the best way possible. Ratted me out, called my mom. We was, me and my brother was living together. My mom moved to Vancouver. I was in Victoria. She, my, my brother called my mom. My other roommate called my mom, said, this guy is just, uh, mm -mm. so I always remember the story of the final hand that was reaching out for me before I was going to do something stupid or make a bad decision. Um, 
I always tell the story of like my mom coming in and busting the door down like the Incredible Hulk, grabbing me by my ear and dragging me out the house and saying, let's go. That's how in my heart I remember it, right? And that's kind of how it felt. It felt like this incredible, she's she's the most incredible woman. And she really did save me, man. Like she really did. And and if it wouldn't have been for her, and if it wouldn't have been for my my asshole brother, who I love so much, and I love his kids now, even though they only kind of like me. Um, if it wouldn't have been for them, the people that really, really support me and and, and wouldn't quit giving, reaching out for me, giving me a hand, if it wouldn't have been for them, I wouldn't have been able to get out of that mentality where I I don't deserve to be happy if I can't do this. What kind of man am I? And that's one of the and things that a lot of people say, man. Sometimes love is manifested in tough love. And at times it's exactly what you fucking need. Exactly. And if your mom had come in there and tried to, you know, talk you out of that situation rather than grabbing you and going, hey, buddy, like get your shit together. Um, you might not be with us today. Dude, so I'm was, grateful she did it. I am too. Every I'm day. And that's your part of dropped a dime on you. Dude, she did, man. And that's part. But here's the thing, Jay, is that's part of the reason why I feel like Mental Health Mondays is so important. And that's why it is so important to me is because I never want to feel like that again. And it wasn't mm -hmm. until I grabbed that hand that was reaching out for me. Uh, it wasn't until I grabbed that hand that I finally came to, to realize that I'm not alone. I do deserve to be happy and, and going to talk to somebody isn't admitting defeat. It isn't failure. It's actually the opposite of those things. It is strength. It is, it is power. It is empowering to be able to start taking control of those things. And a lot of people that I, that I talk to, they, they don't feel that they just are stuck in this thing where I used to be. And so one of the right. things I love about this Mental Health Monday is I'm, I get to be that hand for some people in any, even if it's in this amount of capacity, I, I get to be that for somebody because I know how much I needed it. How long are you planning to keep them up? As long as, as long as every Monday keeps coming around, man. I mean, nice. some, some Mondays are tough. Tuned in. So, yeah. Some Mondays are tough, man, because uh, it's a lot to take on everybody's energy. And, and some Mondays I'm just, I'm in, not in a great place, but. You know, they will be, they'll be around, man. I, I don't, I don't plan on these things going away anytime soon. I'd so, love you spoiler, you want, so, you know, <laughs> no, I listen, I'm, I'm in to do one with you. I, I'm, I've been a fan. Uh, I've tuned in a couple of times and really enjoyed the discussions and, and the honesty and the vulnerability. But um, uh, back to this idea of not being alone in community. Uh, spoiler alert for anybody who doesn't know or isn't watching this on YouTube JoJo is black. And yet you are a country music artist, right? <laughs> so, so I think right now, especially there's this, this hot button uh, issue or talking point around minorities in, in places where, you know, maybe they haven't been welcomed or they haven't been uh, felt like it's been accessible to them. Um, country music being one of those places uh, that seems to be evolving and changing rapidly, uh, which if you're a, a sane individual who believes in equality of opportunity, you would want to, I mean, it would be a shame for Canadian country music if your voice wasn't enriching it, you know, like it's, it, and not just your personality and your charisma, but you know, your, your, your vocals and what you lend to the format, how welcomed have you felt in this community? I have felt the most welcome, surprisingly. Um, why would you say surprisingly? Because I wasn't sure how I was going to be received, right? At the it, five years ago, it was a different world, right? It, it wasn't, it, you know, it was a, it was a, a, a world where in, in, in the Canadian, I don't know how it is in America. I, well, we do know how it is in America, but in Canada, I wasn't sure. I've, I've lived my life and the, the small stereotypes, I'll, I'll give you an example. It's, it's racism with a smile. Donovan Bailey, uh, a Canadian Olympic uh, runner, went on and did a podcast and he, he really did, he hit on something. In Canada, it's racism with a smile. It's, ah, it's cool. I got a black friend. I can say that. Uh, okay. No, you can't. But if I'm going to be invited to, with, the, with the homies or going to be invited to this party... I'm not going to be the one to make a stink about it, right? 
I'm not going to be, I'll, I'll listen to it and I'll shake my head and I'll get upset and I'll go off, do my thing. And that's kind of, it just accepted. Those things are now no longer accepted. But when I, do you think, do you think they're no longer accepted uh, partially because people have, uh, I would say, especially in the last decade, but the five last five years, let's use that because that's what's really affected yeah. you and you would know better than me. People are are willing to take more of a stand publicly and not let things slide as much as they did. It's just um, people. People just didn't. And here's the thing, man. Is at first I was mad. I didn't. People kept messaging me when all this with the George Floyd stuff started happening and and the murder started. Happening. People were messaging me like crazy, being like, "I'm with you, man. I support you. I, I I'm with you. I stand with you." I was like, "Okay." Now what? Like, right. That's fine. And what I does that it's... mean exactly? Like, like exactly. part of that too is virtue signaling, mean? which drives me crazy because yes. I, I do feel like there are people who are well-intentioned who go, you know, I don't know what it's like to live in, in your shoes or in your skin, yeah. but I want to get to know you as a human being and the wrapping paper is a little bit in, inconsequential to me. And then there are people who – Almost like they want to show the world they have a black friend to show everybody else oh. how how good they are and how virtuous they are. Like it's this, there's this weird dynamic as we make these shifts culturally, which which I believe is an evolution overall, yeah. and I think it's a good thing overall. But like there are always these weird hiccups in there where it's like, where's your intention? Like oh. why exactly? You know, like the George yeah. Floyd thing. It's not yeah. like you have anything in common with George Floyd other than the color of your skin. Like, I don't think you guys are related or, you know, that you knew the guy. So there's a little bit of weird connotation there for people to suddenly or, or to, to, to make that association. What it um, was. Let me, let me break it. Let me break it down for you. Yeah. I'll tell you exactly what it was. Okay. It was, it was the guilt that people were feeling of actions that they had previously done not not maybe not to me or the lack of things that they had done or they hadn't done or they had seen situations uh they had seen situations that they didn't speak up or you know they had made that un inappropriate joke or they had done something that you know now because it's getting called out is is unacceptable now for me so are they looking to alleviate their guilt so that they wouldn't get called out by you or initially that's how it felt Okay. Right. And initially that's how it felt. And in my mind, I was, I, I started getting upset. Like, I don't did you have a temptation to start calling motherfuckers out? No, no, no. because that's not my place, right? Not your style. If, that's not my place. It's not my style. If they feel the need that they need to, to, to get that guilt off their chest and, 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 and if they need me to say, Hey, it's okay. Sure. I'll, I'll be that guy for you. But I, but behind, behind the, you know, behind the doors, I would, I, I would start, I started to get upset, but it wasn't until, uh, I started to really, really think about it. And, and my mind shift switched and, and, and it switched from, from, uh, you know, getting upset to more just like being excited. And I don't mean excited that black people are getting murdered or, you know, this and that, but to me, I'm never going to walk into another room and people are never going to, you know, like, what's up, my N word, you know, nobody's ever going to do that to me again, A, because it's not acceptable, but B, it's because people are now realizing how it affects other people. And, and Jim, it's not that, it's not that people don't know that these things are right or wrong. It's that they just don't know how it affects other people and they're not aware. Or so if they do have a black friend and somebody says to them, Somebody says to them, uh, yo, what's up, my N-word, this and that. And they and the black guy responds, Oh, what's up, my N-word? Like that's that's how that's just their conversation. That's how they interact with each other. And it gives them a, almost a thing in their mind where it's like, okay, it's uh, it's cool if I say it. You know, uh Andre says it over here to me. So I can totally I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. But that yeah, but but th- there's there's a there's a corrupted uh issue in that way of thinking because you know you might call your wife sweet ass but you wouldn't just call any woman that right like and that's you know what i mean it's like it's like when people but that's right so people are starting to become more aware and conscious of like okay if i have this rapport even with somebody it doesn't mean that it's universal it doesn't mean i can just throw it around now let's talk about the n-word because i i had a really interesting discussion with a uh a friend of mine who uh is a journalist and okay. um, 
and we were talking about it. And in, in his mind, he was saying, and I won't drop his name because this is a private conversation, but he was saying, listen, like, I think we have to look to get rid of the word. It's got to leave the English language. Like we have to put it behind us. My assertion is, and, and, and I, I'm really interested in your take, is that I don't know if we're getting that horse back in the barn at this point. I mean, I think it's part of pop culture to a degree that it would be very hard to do that. I believe there was a lot of wisdom throughout the 1980s and the 1990s from some of the, the uh, uh, frontiersmen and women of hip hop to disempower that word by giving it a different connotation. Right. So rather than it being rooted in, in ugliness, it's almost like they threw it around as a ter term of endearment. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I don't know. It's just, yeah. I get why they did that. It's kind of like owning your trauma. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. you're taking back this pain, this, this, this word that's rooted in, in hundreds of years of, 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 of association with pain and you're taking its power away by throwing it into a rap song and using it in vernacular in a very cavalier manner. Yeah. There's a part of me that goes, you know what? There might've been some wisdom to that. And maybe if we had just kind of let it go its own natural way, it yeah. would have eventually disappeared. Well, I think that's, I think that's what's happened. I think that's exactly what's happened is, is whether they meant to, to, you know, take it, disempower the, 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 the meaning behind the word, what that's kind of what it's done. But I think in, in the opposite way of your, what you're, what you're saying, I think that's exactly what it's done, but it's given people that license. aren't, that aren't black, a license to use that word, right? right? It's given them a, it's given them the, the green light, you know, to, to say, okay, yeah. Go, go ahead and use it because well, it doesn't mean anything to them. But if I hear right. that word, brother, I don't say that word. I'm rapping. If I'm rapping, if I'm singing a song, if I'm out with, with my, a couple of my black friends, I don't say that word. I don't. It is always weird when I'm working out to Jay-Z or Con Kanye and I'm singing along with the song and that word comes up. I'll be honest. I always, I was just like, well, got to stop myself. Yeah. Can't sing out loud, you know, like Dude. it's and one of those things where, but it's it's strange that it's so ingrained in culture and it, art. It is, and and I I do wonder if maybe originally uh, some of those pioneers in the early days in in rap culture and and in in pop culture had this idea like we're gonna fucking take that word back and we're gonna make it mean something totally different, and then maybe it would just disappear over time. But I now it, it feels just, like I think it was more just I'm gonna take this word. We're gonna take this word back again. I can't speak for, right. for Ice Cube. I can't speak for no, Dr. me Dre. neither. I can't speak for those guys, but you know that's probably all their intent was. Be like, right. this is how the intent used to be used. It will now no longer be used right. for you. You are not allowed to say this anymore. It is our word. And people, I've I've read comments on all the the you know uh, pe people posting about the George Floyd and and the other uh, all the people getting murdered and and it's like well why can black people say it if I why can black people say it if I it, you know why can't I say it if everybody says it well it's you don't get to have everything can't you just accept that this one word you just can't say anymore there there's so much history behind behind the negative connotation of the word can't you just accept that one thing in this world isn't yours? Can't you just accept that? Well, here's the thing, man, is I will never tell somebody how to live their life. I'll never say, Jim, I, I know you don't, but if you were, to, if you say the N-word every day and you talk to your homies like that and you talk to your bros and your sisters like that, cool, that's fine. You do you, bro. If that's what makes you happy, if that's what makes you feel good, go ahead. But when I'm around, you will not say that word. And I will make sure you don't say that word. I will call you out. I will talk that shit to you if I need to. And I will educate you. And then we'll be friends. And then we'll be best friends again. And my the way I the way I work, man, is everybody. Has that happened more. recently with you? It happens all the time. Have you had to have that conversation on a, a in a situation where you're like, whoa, 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 that was out of bounds, and here's why. And then when you have that conversation, how does it usually go? Is the person immediately defensive and apologetic, or is it 
is it, I guess it would depend on the individual yeah. and I, the I've, context I've, too. I've had, uh, I've had a couple of, a couple of, well, more than I would care to admit of run-ins with people thinking that it's okay. And again, it's that, it's that, you know, that, that thing where it's cool, man. I say it all the time. I, I got black friends. I played this show. I'll give you an example. I played this show, uh, Canada day. It was a couple years ago, downtown Vancouver. And, and I'm walking around, I'm after the show, it was a beautiful night. I'm walking around with Chanel and, and some dude comes up to me. He's like, yo, what's up my N word. And this white guy, I stop. And this is, this is what I, this is what I do. I, I, and I do it on purpose to make sure they know that it's not okay. I stare at them like this. What, what did you call me? And that's what I say. I said, what did you call me? I'm like, yo man, no disrespect. I said, I don't want you to say that word no more. Don't, when I'm around, bro, don't say that word. I make them, I make them feel it, Jam. And maybe this isn't the right way to do it. I don't know. But this is how I've learned that works. I say, don't you ever fucking say that around me again. Don't you ever. And then we're friends again, right? Right. Just because they use that word doesn't mean they're a bad person. Just because people, and, and, and I think that's a really important demarcation. Not that I'm defending the yeah. use of the word, but I think I think people reserve their. I've always said this: people reserve the right to be fucking morons. People yeah. reserve the right yeah. to be stupid, right, to a degree, yeah. because how you learn in life is by screwing up and getting yeah. better, yeah, man. right? That's and for some people, that you. journey yeah. starts at 40 years old. You yeah. know, yeah. like yeah. unfortunately. Absolutely. Right. Like uh, we just saw this controversy with Morgan Wallen in the U.S. Just dropping the N word. And like, you know, and it, in the context he was using it, it's like obviously he was being cavalier. He thought he was being funny. Um, Racism was I fine. obviously don't think he should have done it, but I'm not positive that means he's part of the KKK. You know what I mean? Like, dude, and it's that's one of those things. things. That's the yeah. thing. My dad has, has done a very good job of 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 uh, implementing a, a value in me, um, which is everybody deserves the benefit of the doubt. I don't, you have, you have to, there, nobody is born mean. Nobody is born angry. Nobody is born a piece of shit. Nobody is. And so, and so with the Morgan Wallen thing, at first it, I was just like, damn, is that who he is? Like, is that who he is? And I thought about it and I thought, nah, I'm, I, that's probably just how he was raised and the people he was around. That's probably the normal language for them. And that's how he, that's just how it was. He got caught. He got, he got crucified online, but he was also invited to the NAACP. He took that meet, took that meeting. He went there, and the thing that he said after after he was after he left there was that he was shook. He yes. it the stories that he heard shook him. And Jim, that was the best thing that could have happened to him and to to people that support him and to the people that that follow his journey. And I'll tell you why it was the most it was an incredible thing to happen because now when people are around him. And they're saying no, they're saying that word, or they're dropping that end bomb, or the people that follow him are starting to 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 you know, and we're this and we're that. He's gonna be the first one to call them out. He's right. gonna be the first one to and now he knows how it I don't think Morgan wants a bad there's person. He's, there's he's nothing more beautiful than watching someone grow. Totally. Right. And, and if you can see evolution in people and go, listen, like you were a fuck up, but now you got your shit together. And actually you're kind of an admirable person at this point. Like, I think there's something that we all love to see. It goes you know? back to, it goes back to, to, to the beginning where I first was angry at, at everything. When all the, it started, everything started coming to light. I used to get angry, but then it, it started to make me excited because it felt like, change was happening and history part of history was happening before our eyes we're part of this man right we're gonna look back in 30 40 years and be like damn we went through some shit to get to here everybody's yes. constantly growing and constant i'll never look at somebody and, and and immediately assume that they're a piece of shit or that they're racist or that they have terrible thoughts in their mind if something slips i'm a, i'm gonna be upset 
but ultimately I'm going to ask you why, or, but you're taking how, corrective action because you want them to be better, not just because you're trying to hurt it. them. The and that's a different way, intent. The only way we're going to, to move forward as society. And the only way we're going to, we're going to continue to grow is education and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it I man. agree, man. Uh, are you familiar with Daryl Davis? No. Um, I've, I've, I've talked about him on the podcast before. I, I really wish he would get more attention from mainstream media. He's a, uh, he's a musician and um, I'm actually trying to get him on the podcast. I'd love to have him on. He's done a great Ted talk. I'll send you a link to it. You'll Please. love it. Um, he happens to be a black guy. He's a musician. He has personally converted over 300 members of the KKK to leave that organization by engaging them in conversation, just like you're doing right now, like just like sitting down and he says, I always start with the same question. How can you hate me if you don't know me? Right. And he yeah. said, it's amazing to me to watch the evolution of these people who, who were born into, you know, a, a, a racist uh, a, a structure in their family and this corrupted belief system that they possessed and they, they didn't know better. And, I'm not saying that those people are victims necessarily, but I think if you're if you're raised to believe that the world is fucking flat and then one day you go to school and you learn it's not yeah. like you, you have an opportunity there to embrace a new way of understanding. Right. And if you choose to take that, then you can leave your history behind you it's because all we're all on a journey to be better. Right. It's all about how it's delivered too, right? Right. And Daryl is just, I mean, he's such an inspirational, kind, thoughtful, uh, just yeah. just a, a model citizen of a human being. And yeah. he is literally solving the racism problem yeah. <laughs> by engaging with these people on a human level and going yeah. like, I just want to understand why you hate me. And he's like, you know, most of these people after – three or four sit downs will come to him with their robe, which he's, he's collected them almost like hunting trophies. They'll hand him the hood and the robe and go, I'm out. I don't believe this anymore. I don't know why I believed it. I was raised that way, whatever it is. And they're out and they're changing their lives. And that motherfucker should have his own show on CNN. Oh, oh. I'm just saying, like, You're I wish he did. Right. If, if we actually cared about as much, you know, if we cared as much about solving the problem of racism as we all pretend to sometimes yeah, man. then we would make voices like his louder totally. because he's doing it totally man and again like 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 we say it's all about how it's delivered right if if i'm gonna come into attack you're going on the defense and you're gonna fight back but if i come to you from a place of love <clears throat> from a place of compassion from a place of 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 respect of of mutual respect it will be received as such yes if, right Yes, that's so poignant. There's um, there's really only two forms of communication. And I was having this conversation with Hunter, my nine-year-old daughter, <laughs> last night. We were talking about bullying and, and the whole pink shirt thing and 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 the idea that there's there's a cry for help and there's another cry for help, and that just escalates things, right? So sometimes a cry for help doesn't come in the most convenient form. It isn't someone going, oh, I'm really depressed. Can you take me for a coffee? Sometimes they snap at you or they lose their shit, and, and you have in that moment the choice to go, am I going to answer their cry for help with my own cry for help because I feel threatened, insecure, and defensive, or am I going to answer it with the other alternative, which is a loving response, which is a response that goes, hey, are you okay? Like I care about you and I'm not going to let you walk on me and you're not going to, you know, you're not going to verbally abuse me, but like what's going on here. Right. And the minute you do that, it's amazing how it just diffuses a lot of these situations. And right. That's, that's not how people are taught though. And that's the hard, no. that's the hard part, right? People are, are learned to, if somebody attacks you, you fight, right? If somebody attacks right. you, you defend yourself. Right. But there's different ways. And that's, so this is something that I, I used to, I used to do, and I, I used to fight. I used to be that, like not physically, but you know, if somebody's gonna come at me, you, you best believe I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back at you. But that's not, that's just coming from experience and growth. I think, like I'm thirty, I'm thirty one tomorrow, man. Like, it, I, I'm, 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 I'm getting up there, and and in my years on this earth, I, I feel like I have experienced enough to know that nobody's bad, 
there are bad people in this world for sure, but nobody starts out their life like a shitty person. Nobody. Does and there's that. a path to redemption for there's almost everybody if they're always. given the chance and they're given the encouragement to redeem themselves. Okay. You know, a lot of times too, people play into these these corrupted mindsets, whether it's racism or sexism or just being an asshole because it's worked yeah. for. Them. You see it in our industry all the time, like. I saw myself going off on that tangent of being the hyper assertive type A personality. Fuck you. Take no prisoners, which has a lot of utility as an agent, Yeah. but I didn't like myself and I didn't like the guy I was becoming holistically. And I felt that I could still be strong and assertive and people would know not to fuck with me, but I could be calm and I could be reassuring and I could be helpful and encouraging. And I could be a, a more of a positive energy force when someone lies to me or tries to rip off one of my clients, they know like the shit's going to hit the fan, but they know it's not because I just had a temper tantrum. They know they fucked up. And usually what, what I find is in long-term relationships, if I have to come at somebody for something they've done, it usually means they know they fucked up. They're ready to own it. And usually I'll come at them with a, Hey, this is an indicative of the character that you've portrayed and displayed to me over the last eight years or whatever it's been. Right. So I need you to explain why you did this <laughs> and I need to understand it. And yeah. generally people will just be like, you know, I tried to take a shortcut or I thought maybe you wouldn't notice. And, yeah. you know, they'll usually own up to it right away. And then you've got an opportunity to make amends without backing someone into a corner. Right. Totally. And, and for so many years, I would just back people into a corner and then I'd fight them. And it was like, well, first off, it's exhausting. Oh. And secondly, <laughs> like you just you just end up with all these, or for me anyway, I would end up with all these internal conversations. I'd be in the shower and I'd be just fuming about how I took someone to task earlier that, you know, that day or that week. And it's like, why am I so unhappy? Well, it's because I'm focusing on all this shit. Now, if I had a if I had a disagreement with somebody and I came out on it the other side is friends. I actually feel good about that later. Yeah. Oh shit. Sorry, Jake. It's okay. Um, yeah, man. And that's, I, I was going to ask you, do you, do you find that since you've switched that mentality, right? Since you switched the meet it, meet problems with grace rather than force. Do you find that the results are still the same, but you feel just so much better? No, I would say the results are even a bit different. Like I, I think that, there are people out there who are addicted to drama and fighting and they don't even know it. And if you dance their dance, then they are going to be happy to fight with you and happy to engage in conflict because it's all they know. But if you meet their aggression with a graceful response to use your word, they don't really know how to handle you. They don't really know what to do with you and they know they can't bully you, but they also know like you're not going to dance the dance with them and play the game. So I would say, yes, that's a, that's a byproduct. It makes you feel better, but also I just have less conflict because most of the time it just doesn't get to that place. If I feel like there's an impro- impropriety early on in, in a negotiation, I will draw attention to it, but I won't do that from a place of presuming the worst about the person. Totally. I will do that from a place of, Hey, we talked about you providing, you know, flights and hotels and I yeah. see your offer doesn't have it. So did you uh, overlook that or, yeah, you know, what happened? Was it, was it a mistake? Yeah, totally. What do we need to talk about it? <laughs> totally. What do we need to talk about here? Yeah. And usually people will come around, they'll own it or they'll go, you know what? I worked on the budget. Now I've realized I can't, you know, it's like, well, listen, I've already told my client that they're provided. So you're going to have to go back and sharpen your pencil and figure this out. Go get a sponsor or something. But, but, um, I find it just changes the energy of the relationships long-term and this business is all based on long-term relationships. 100%. And so you want to make sure that you're, you're nurturing those as much as possible. That's great, man, dude. It's, it's been so amazing. It's been, it's been really nice to, to get to know you, man, as, as not just a, an, an agent, the agent that you are and, and the award winner that you are and the, you know, it's it's nice to to get to know you on on a personal level. I'm not talking about this podcast because we we've been homies for a minute, but um, 
it's really nice to see you and hear you speak the, those words, man, because it, it really does rub off on people. And one of the things that people tell me about my mental health Mondays is, is that I don't even know that they, I don't even know these people. They come up and they say, man, it makes an impact. Jim, people are always watching. People are always watching. And, and, and I love that I've been able to, to get to know you and, and to call you in when I need some advice or, you know, and, and you, you'll meet that with, again, compassion and love and respect and, and man, it's it's nice it's nice to know you. It's nice to know you, man. Yeah, well, vice versa. Now, before we wrap this up, because we've been talking for almost an hour and a half, which always yeah. happens every time you and I have a conversation. Uh, what's next in the world of JoJo Mason? Tell me about the single rollout plan, the album rollout plan. What do you got planned uh, from a career perspective for the next little while? We're just chilling right now, man. We've got songs coming in. Uh, the team is sifting through. Of course, I'm doing my own writing on my own as much as I can. But we put out uh, we put out that song in the summertime, and then we dropped the EP. And so we're kind of playing this. I, I, at least this is this is how I'm playing in my mind. This is how we're playing it. Is is we're waiting to see we, we we're not just going to put something out just for the sake of putting something out we're waiting for the right thing the right sound and and something that i really really believe in right i always told you man i'm never going to put out a song that or music that that doesn't make me feel or doesn't make me you know it, does, it doesn't affect me. i'm never going to do that right that's you're not going to go through thing. the motions i'm not just going to go through the motions just for the sake yeah. of going for the motions. i think that's one of the things that my my team appreciates about me and that's one of the things i appreciate about my team is like we're not just going to settle we're going to continue to work we're going to continue to write we're going to continue to put you in positions of to, to be successful obviously with covid is hard um but we're in constant communication and and uh we're hoping to have another single come out in the next couple of months and and when it does is going to be great. In the meantime, I'm focusing on the things that I can control, my fitness, the things that are making my endorphins flow with my piano. I'm practicing my piano every day. Um, you know, I'm I'm recording these these the, these songs that I love so much that finally I get a chance to, you know, to kind of showcase what I can do a little bit. And and uh I think it's it's really nice to see the support of of Dal and Scotty and and Jenna and Kelly and, and Billy Joe and it's really cool to see all that happen and come to the forefront and just them jumping on things that I love as well. So what's coming next, man? We got singles coming out. The yin gang. And it's I love way, it. <laughs> oh, great. Well, that is good to hear, man. You are uh, such a breath of fresh air for this industry and happy to call you a friend. And uh, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. I would gladly have you back on any time. So man, uh, let's, well, let's yeah. make it happen. Let's give it a little time. Wait for some cool shit happens yeah, and then absolutely we'll about, let's we'll do it out. but in the meantime i'm gonna get you either next week or the week after on my mental health mondays all right all right you got it next all time right, i'm in man. vancouver we're going for a workout god damn it <laughs> all right give me a couple of weeks let me get my ass in shape first all right? <laughs> <laughs> you'll be just fine okay thanks brother all right love you lots man take it easy you too